good morning and a very warm welcome to St Chad's Church today for our worship on the web. Today is the second Sunday of Trinity, also a day when we celebrate and remember the part that fathers play in all our lives. A warm welcome to you today, wherever you're viewing this from and at whatever time, whether you are a member of our parish or indeed are further afield. You're all extremely welcome here today and isn't it lovely to be back inside the building even if only in a fairly limited way. I hope you'll be able to join in with our responses and with our hymns as we come to them. So now we prepare to worship God together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God. We love. So now we have the choir leading us in singing the hymn Take my life and let it be. back as we come now to a short prayer written by that great 19th century theologian John Newman. Lord, you are the living flame, burning ceaselessly with love for mankind. Enter into us and inflame us with your love, so that we might be like you. Amen. 
So we come now to our prayers of penitence, asking God's help for us to put right all the many things that we get wrong in our everyday lives. So let us examine our lives in the light of St. Paul's teaching about the nature of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful and it does not rejoice in wrongdoing. And so acknowledging that our attitudes and behavior often fall short of these standards, we confess our sins to God, saying together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the collect for today. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So now we're going to listen uh, as our readings are um, done for us. Our first reading is done by Elaine Lavender from the Old Testament as she reads from the book of the prophet Jeremiah and that will be followed by Philip Sims reading from St. Matthew's Gospel. Our reading today is taken from Jeremiah 20, verses 7 to 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble, saying, perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior, therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonour will never be forgotten. 
O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's Gospel is taken from St Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 24. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear for them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of Christ. May I speak, and may we all hear, in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you, Philip, for that reading. Thanks also to the compilers of our lectionary for giving us a gospel reading that, at first glance, looks pretty unpromising as a starting point for Father's Day. But, of course, Father's Day, although much beloved by the sellers of greeting cards and small presents, is not, strictly speaking, a religious festival. But... Given that the secular world has taken over Mothering Sunday to such a large extent, which of course was the last time that we worshipped from this building, I feel a bit justified in trying to do the reverse, to take a secular feast and, uh, and Christianise it. And of course the image of the Father is very important to both Jews and Christians. The Father is the creative force of God and perhaps also the image of judgment. And although our readings seem a bit unpromising, I think we can still find a link to our current world and our daily concerns and even to Father's Day. So let's begin by considering the image that Jesus conjures up 
for us of a caring and all-seeing God who knows us intimately, even down to counting the hairs on our head. I will admit that there's an element of potential menace in that picture that he draws of a father from whom it is impossible to hide. I'm reminded of the saying that I'm sure some of you will recall, just wait till your father gets home, usually said by a frustrated and despairing mother when confronted with the latest bit of mischief that we may have committed. Nothing is covered up, nothing is secret that will not become known. But we are reassured, do not be afraid, for you are worth infinitely more than a mere sparrow. We may have to face the disappointment of our parent that we fail to live up to our potential for good, but God's judgment is always tempered with mercy. And somehow that may be harder to bear than a few blows. Two weeks or so ago, we were rejoicing in the gift of the Holy Spirit, the great comforter and advocate. But there are two sides to the Holy Spirit, which is sent, so it has been said, to bring comfort to the disturbed, but also to disturb the comfortable. And it must be said that this gospel reading is more likely to leave us disturbed than comfortable. But maybe that is what is intended. Matthew was writing for a community of Jewish Christians who were facing considerable persecution for their faith in Jesus of Nazareth as the embodiment of the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ. They would have understood all too well what the cost could be of acknowledging Jesus before others. They also probably had direct experience of the pain of families being divided and in conflict because of their decision to follow Jesus. For us in our Western world, which is at least nominally founded on Judeo-Christian principles, this is, a diffi this is difficult to understand. But words that may sound disquieting and uncomfortable to us were probably words of comfort and affirmation to those who were suffering in a very real way for following their hearts and minds. It's all about commitment, which brings me back, eventually, to fatherhood. Good fathers are worth celebrating because they offer commitment, security, and above all, love to their partners and families. Not every father lives up to this ideal, of course, and the recent lockdown has, so we are told, caused a considerable rise in the incidence of domestic violence. Not that this is always the father's fault, of course, but statistically, it is more likely. And the stresses and strains for all parents of trying to work from home while homeschooling young children are exhausting. So I can understand that levels of frustration rise. No more waiting till father gets home. We're all cooped up under one roof all the time, or have been until very recently. And being a disciple of Christ is also about commitment. I heard it said recently that <coughs> Christianity is not a private faith, and that's true. Every baptised Christian receives the commission to tell others the good news of Christ's saving power in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Much of the time we may conveniently try to forget that because, well, it sounds a bit confrontational, doesn't it? But that is the reality. So maybe, while the gift of the Holy Spirit is still fairly fresh in our minds, as it were, it is good to be reminded that we are expected to be witnesses for Christ to the end of the earth 
even if that causes a bit of friction amongst our nearest and dearest. But when someone does not understand the value and importance of our faith to us, well, maybe we should do more to explain to them and win them over. Fathers can be tender and compassionate, just as nurturing as mothers. But they are also often the ones who teach us how to stand up to life's problems, how to handle ourselves in an argument, how to stand our corner. And maybe that is how best to understand these words of Jesus this morning. This is tough love on one level, but there is never any question that it is deep and committed love. The love of a father as of his only son. Amen. Daddy. 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 I hope you enjoyed that little film. And now I have another short prayer for you. Lord Jesus, when you took a child and told adults to become like her, if they wanted to enter your kingdom, what did you mean? Are we to be naive or to ask questions? To be innocent or to be trusting? to be shy or to sing, to be docile or to be open-eyed. Show us how to become not the ideal child we imagine, but the real child you blessed. Teach us, if we've done too much growing up, how to grow down. Amen. And now we're going to sing again the hymn, Such Love. Let us declare our faith in God.
We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Bless our fathers, God the Father of all, and bless all those who have fathered us in the Spirit. We bless you for their gifts to us, gifts of nurture and strength, of understanding and dependability, of energy and decisiveness, of gentleness and wisdom, of peace and courage. We bless you for all that is good in their influence on our lives. We ask you to cherish and sustain them as they have cherished and sustained us. Give them happiness in their relationship with us. Give them recognition for what they do. And may we do for others the good things they have done for us. Father of all, in your mercy, hear us. Lord God, you are the perfect father to us all. Bless all fathers in the world today. Give them love to share with their children. Give them courage when the job seems hard. Give them patience when things don't go to plan. Give them strength to carry their children when they are tired or frightened. Give them love to share with their children and let it be enough. Father of all, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who teach in schools, colleges and universities. May their skills help the young to achieve their best. Father of all, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who care for the sick and frail. May they bring strength and encouragement to others and know your grace for themselves. We pray especially for those who suffer from ill health or pain, loneliness or loss. In our own community, we pray for Daniel, Ruth, Sheila, Claire, Harry, Kirsty, and Robin. We also pray for those who have contracted the coronavirus here in the UK and in other parts of the world. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones and peace to those who are worried, fearful, and uncertain about the virus. We also pray for the governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus. And those in the health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Deliver them from their distress and grant them healing, patience, and peace. Father of all, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for all those whose fathers have died. We pray for those in our own community who have recently departed our world. Isabel Smith, Sylvia Giles, and Jill Cheatham. We pray for those mentioned in our memorial book whose anniversaries fall this week. Give strength to their family and friends. We pray to you for all those whom we love but see no longer. Lord, grant to them eternal rest. 
Father of all, in your Lord, mercy, yes. hear us. Loving God, as a father feeds, nurtures and sustains his children, so you feed us with the rich food of your heavenly banquet. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you, Peter, for leading us through our prayers this morning. Now we come to our closing responses. In gratitude, in deep gratitude, for this moment, for our homes, for all who have fostered and fathered us, shown us the way, given us love and examples to follow, we give ourselves to you, Lord. Take us out to live as changed people, because we have been touched by the living Lord and cannot remain the same. Ask much from us. Expect much from us. Enable much by us. Encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of the earth and citizens of the Commonwealth of Heaven. Amen. We join in singing our final hymn for today, Now is Eternal Life. Yeah.
So thank you so much, Greg, for all the music that you've prepared for us for today. And thanks also to Mike, who's been busy filming this service for us uh, also. And now our closing prayer. Go before us, Lord, in all we do with your most gracious favour, and guide us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, receive everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church, meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. <laughs>